Good morning, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the title of this presentation is the return of kinetic hydrate inhibitor. Perhaps it's worth mentioning why I choose this name, because at the time my son was very young and he wanted to play um, Star Wars. And I thought it's a good title for this presentation. Um, thank you for the invitation. Uh, first of all, uh, I represent today Center for Gas Hydrogen Reducers at Heritage Port University and Hydrofact Limited. Uh, the background to Heritage Port research in hydrate goes back to uh, PVT goes back to 1978, hydrate 1986. And we have now several projects on hydrate with support from government and industry. Uh, Hydrofact is a spin out company from the same research group. Uh, the abbreviation of Hydrofact is hydrate and flow assurance consultancy and technology was formed in 2006 uh, and uh, the job we do is consultancy software we have hydroflash technology hydrocheck hydrosense uh, khi removal recovery and reuse hydrocheck determine the hydrate safety margin hydrosense determine um, initial signs of hydrate formation. Uh, if you need further information, please get back to me. Also training and equipment. Um, the group is all together, 20 staff, six labs, including H2S lab. So, <clears throat> You are all familiar with hydrate, so I'm not going to bore you with the background with hydrate. Um, the point I want to mention is that uh, hydrate formation needs three requirements, presence of water or ice, suitable size um, gas liquid molecule, and suitable temperature and pressure condition. Now, at the time, that was based on the um, thermodynamic inhibitor. Now, the suitable temperature and pressure is uh, controlled by size of the gas molecule. Here, uh, had single cage, this is oxygen, this is hydrogen and it make a, a cage like host and then uh, this is the gas molecule uh, which is the gas. Now normally uh, between two molecules you have some attraction and repulsion that we can uh, represent with Chiara parameter here. Chiara assumed that the uh, a molecule has a hard core and soft uh, cloud. And if you look at two molecules, when they are far away from each other, they don't have any attraction or repulsion towards each other. But as they get closer to each other, this um, the electron cloud will shift and part of the molecule became positive, part of it become negative, and they attract each other. This is London forces or uh, Wonder World forces. So initially attraction, but if they get too close to each other, they repel each other a little bit like human being um, and repair each other. So that is when two molecules can move with respect to each other. But in hydrate, 
the cage size is almost constant. So they, they cannot, uh, here we're talking about the oxygen and gas molecule, they cannot um, get closer or far further. Basically, the distance is in a way is fixed and that depends on the size of the molecule here. So the size of molecule uh, determine how easily we can form hydrate. If a molecule like um, um, nitrogen is very small, so doesn't have a lot of tendency to form hydrate. But if you look at um, um, isobutane, we have um, spherical, round, and good size, so it promotes hydrate formation. And maybe cyclopentane is very strong for hydrate formation, but cyclohexane is not as good because it's too big. So what control the hydrate phase boundary is the uh, composition of the gas molecule. The other uh, parameter that impact the hydrate phase boundary is the composition of aqueous phase. And um, when we have a water soluble material, that will reduce the, uh, uh, the number of water molecules can, that can, can, can take part in hydrate formation therefore push the hydrate phase boundary to the left. And we use this, uh, for example, component like uh, methanol, like glycol, uh, to push the hydrate phase boundary to the left. So this is uh, action of thermodynamic inhibitor. Here we want to talk about uh, another class of inhibitor, kinetic, hydrate inhibitor, and they will impact the hydrate crystal. That is, they pretend to be a gas molecule and prevent hydrate formation and certain direction. Here is a small video. <clears throat> you see that hydrate is forming. <clears throat> Uh, it is hydrate because at the bottom you see that there is this water is there. Both hydrate is started uh, at the interface because interface is the maximum amount of gas at the interface, and hydrate needs uh, a lot more gas compared to what is dissolved in water. So. Now, in general, once we determine the hydrate phase boundary, then we need to find out what is the condition of the uh, pipeline. So this is an offshore development. So the fluid comes here very warm. As it moves towards shore, then the temperature reduces and goes into hydrate stability zone. And there are various techniques for preventing hydrate formation, removal of water, controlling system uh, temperature by insulation or heating, um, reducing the system pressure that we don't normally use this because pressure is energy. Uh, we use this technique when we have a blockage. Injection of thermodynamic inhibitor, which they affect the, uh, the aqueous phase. And here, the focus of my talk here is the low dose hydrate inhibitor, in particular, um, kinetic hydrate inhibitor. And obviously, you can do various combination and another concept, cold flow, that I'm not going to talk about. So this presentation is based on new technique, which is not very new at the moment, crystal growth inhibition. 
I explain to you why we develop this technique. And then um, the fact that kinetic hydrate inhibitor have very um, low vapor pressure. So the amount of that chemical in the vapor phase is very little. Um, so if there are worried that, you know, hydrate can form at the top of the pipe pipeline. And also the conventional technique for evaluating uh, kinetic hydrate inhibitor is based on induction time. So that is the question is that if we are in the hydrate region, how long will it take to form hydrate? Therefore, whatever the answer is, the question is that what happens if we are under shutting condition? Because shutting condition could be for a few months. And hopefully not, but it can happen. So a lot of companies, they rejected using of uh, kinetic hydrate inhibitor. The other problem is kinetic hydrate inhibitor. What to do uh, in, when we receive it in or produce fluid? because they are chemical and they can cause problem. And also they, uh, you know, most of them are not environmentally friendly. So one option is to inject them to deep wells uh, to aquifer, so produce water reinjection, which is being used in many uh, countries. The problem is that this chemical, they normally come out of solution at 40 degrees. And as you know, the injection, if the injection well is 3000 meters, you can expect more than 100 degree temperature. So they can block the, uh, the pipeline or in hot country, Saudi Arabia, they can uh, block the, uh, the uh, strainer uh, before pumps, and then, therefore we have cavitation in the pump. And make regeneration unit, that because in make regeneration unit, the temperature can be as high as uh, 160 degrees, and that can cause uh, this uh, chemical to come out of solution. And so therefore, we, with this uh, sort of discussion, therefore you cannot mix make with uh, kinetic hydrate inhibitor. And I explained that here, uh, KHI can replace 20 to 40% make, and I explained that later. So it, if you have high water cut, then um, the MEG is not cost effective. So it would be good if we can combine MEG with KHI uh, or replace it with KHI. And then, um, then we need, if you want to do MEG vegetation, you need to remove the KHI before going to make vegetation unit. And also in the past, uh, if somebody asks, okay, you know, what KHI can I use? Um, the, you know, the best option, they say that, okay, what is subcooling? And then they recommend the KHI uh, or several KHI on, you need to, you had to test it and you couldn't say which one is suitable for this condition. Um, KHI also reduces uh, gas flaring because it will really give us the ability to uh, keep shutting condition as higher pressure, therefore less gas flaring. And I'll explain that later and reduce the fair production and so 
really is the return of kinetic uh, kinetic inhibitor? I believe so. So kinetic data inhibitor normally uh, they started the discussion and and exploration in 1980s, 1990s. So it's providing 30 year service. And what we need normally is uh, less than 3% kinetic hydrogen inhibitor compared to 20 to 50, even more uh, thermodynamic inhibitor. And it will reduce the capex because offshore, uh, you need to have either you need to have a pipeline for trans uh, transferring the MEG, or you have to have a big storage uh, on the platform. And we know platform have limitation on footprint and weight. And if you have high water cut, then um, uh, we need more uh, uh, thermodynamic inhibitor because you want to maintain this concentration in the aqueous phase. At the moment, the problem, uh, the current technique, which is induction time technique, is that the results are not consistent. Um, so some, some day you are get good results, some day you get bad results. So we have bad repeatability if you test in one lab, you get one result. If you re repeat in, you know, that test in the same lab, you also can get a different result. And as I said, this problem we have. Uh, so the conventional technique for testing kinetic hydro inhibitor that you look at what is the maximum pressure? What is the minimum temperature in the last, I don't know, 50, 100 years. So the test condition would be maximum pressure, minimum temperature. And the typical test would be something like this. So this is the pressure, this is temperature. Here we reduce the temperature to four degrees. And obviously, um, the effect of pressure here, we can see here. And as we reduce the temperature, the gas con contracts, some of it will dissolve in the aqueous phase. And then induction time starts from here. You are in the condition of inside the hydrated phase boundary. And therefore, you look at how long will it take for the hydrate to form. Obviously, mixing and and uh, you know, uh, certain ratio of liquid gas, hydrocarbon. And here uh, we see the hydrate formation. You can see that uh, because hydrate takes a lot of gas and is exothermic, you see that the pressure drop and temperature increases. So that's an ideal test condition that we, we normally in our lecture, uh, we show this. So you can see that at around 200 minutes to 1400 minutes, uh, the system has not formed hydrate. So two, 20 hours, this chemical prevented hydrate formation. We call this induction time as if the fluid uh, residence and time in the pipeline is less than 20 hours, we say we are home and dry. Yeah, it's the past. So that's it. So here this discussion is um, two major uh, chemical that are used for uh, base formulation of KHI. One is uh, PV cap, uh, one is PBT, PVP. And I'm 
focus here on PV cap. So conventionally, we are, you know, the test they do, they see that the induction time is a function of subcooling. If subcooling is high, the induction time approaches zero. As subcooling low, induction time increases. But it's not as nice as this picture uh, plotted here. Is uh, many different points, and you try to pass uh, a line on that. So, but in reality, this is the result. <clears throat> you see that this inhibitor failed, and this inhibitor in this test uh, passed. But if I repeat the test, you see that the pressure drop. So that was sort of, you know, judgment by different companies. They said, oh, if the one PSI, then drop is not important. If it is, I don't know, 100 PSI, then it is important. The fact is that it's not repeatable. And then if I, if I use 4% uh, THI, these three failed, and this one, I'm not sure is failed or not, but if I do the same test with corrosion inhibitor, then fail. Yeah. So, so some companies uh, say that, okay, if you have three passes of the, in four tests, you are okay. So that was the conventional uh, sort of wisdom. But if you look at hydrate formation, is like any other crystallization has two stages, nucleation and growth. Nucleation is not repeatable in general because it depends on rate of cooling, depends on nucleation site, for example, if you have corrosion, then you have a lot more site. If you have a large cell, you have more uh, nucleation site. In a pipeline that you have all foreign material and uh, corrosion and the rest of it, then nu nucleation can be very short. So the equation is not repeatable. Depends the rate of cooling, uh, rate of mixing, presence of foreign material, relative volume of different phases. So it's not repeatable. But our study showed that the growth stage is repeatable. So the, the question was why we don't test based on growth and the nucleation what is is an extra safety factor because really in the lab that you have a small cell and very polished there is no um, nucleation side you know the, the reason we drink champagne in crystal because it's it is very little nucleation site, and therefore the gas in the champagne will remain. So it depends on the roughness of the surfaces and this, uh, the, uh, the amount of surface. You see it here, it, you know, this is a, a test. You can see that uh, here a shock can help in nucleation. Pennsylvania. You see that? Now for me, for me, guys. You can see that the mixing and uh, nucleation plays a major role. So we say that okay, if nucleation is 
very important. How about removing inflation? So this point is are, are at every five minutes. Okay. So we're cooling the system, and you see that hydrate has not formed up to around four degrees, which is around five degrees, uh, five, five and a half degrees subcooling. And then you see that it's forming very fast. You see that the distance between these uh, points is uh, a lot. And also because it's forming very fast, the thermal effect, you can see the thermal effect, hydrate formation is exothermic, the temperature increases. Because the methane, only pure methane, it goes to methane hydrate phase boundary. Now, this is the situation uh, section. We are melting, you see that if you go one degree outside hydrate phase boundary, then you are melting. And if you go back here, you have some hydrate because you didn't go uh, up to here, you haven't dissociated all hydrate. So you see that they will have some hydrate here. And if you go back, you see that is uh, following this line. So because you have removed uh, nucleation, so it's repeatable. You can do it 100 times, you get the same result. But if you do this 100 times, you may not get the same uh, or do it in a different cell with different cooling rate and the rest. So basically the conventional testing technique, here you can see that the dissolution, the, the uh, gas dissolution in aqueous phase. This is induction time. You are inside hydrate phase boundary, and then you see that hydrate is not forming here, and then is forming here. This is nucleation and growth. So basically what we are doing, we probably are measuring from here to here as induction time. Yeah. So if you remove this section, this is work an extra safety margin. Now we do the same test in the presence of PP cap, a small amount of PP cap. You can see that I'm cooling here and here, hydrate is started forming, but you see the formation of hydrate is not as fast as used to be. And the thermal effect, you see that the five, uh, five minutes are closer to each other. And the thermal effect is less. So the conclusion I get is that KHI are interfering with hydrate formation, is slowing down hydrate formation. Yeah, that's why we do. So the KHI is doing something with the hydrate crystal. But then if you start cool uh, heating to dissociate, you see that you need to heat quite a lot in the without KHI, you need to heat at the one degree, but with KHI, you have to one, two, three, four, four and a half degree to a start association. And that is indication that KHI are adsorbed to surface. Okay. And then if you heat, so one point to remember. Um, if you block your pipeline, when you have KHI, you might have to heat more. Just coming out of phase boundary is, may not be enough. And then I go back here, it starts forming again. I expect like pure methane, this is again methane without KHI, I expect this to go this way, but this is what's happening. So hydrate is melting because the pressure is has increased. But you see that the pressure doesn't go to initial 
uh, pressure. So there is some hydrate here. So the way we explain this is that the fast hydrate formation, the KHI prevents hydrate formation at certain dimension. So hydrate form as a plate, but plate is not from uh, surface energy, plate is not the best. You need to have a sphere. So plate from corner we dissolve with the expectation that we grow from the metal. That's why a plate is converted to a sphere. But KHI prevents the growth from surface. So the result would be um, hydrate melting. But the thickness of the plate is a certain um, dimension, a certain number. So it will form a sphere with that number. So imagine that the one millimeter, so it will melt, but keep to be a, a sphere with one, one millimeter. Uh, so here, you can see that. Uh, so we are um, careful of the time. You can see that this is an area that uh, thermodynamic uh, kinetic hydrate inhibitor work as thermodynamic hydrate inhibitor and um, because it's not forming and then we have a, a slow growth region so we identify this region and uh, a slow growth a slow dissociation region complete inhibition uh, region a slow growth region and rapid growth region and we can see that for this uh, PV cap is uh, for methane is 5.3 uh, degrees of cooling can result uh, is within the complete inhibition region. And then we have a slow growth, very slow and slow growth region. And we identify this region uh, by this criteria that each region is 10 times the growth is greater is 10 times the previous region. So what to do, this was for methane, what to do with, uh, you know, natural gases. Uh, here we, this is methane. Now we notice that if you add a natural gas, this PV cap, PV, uh, PV cap is very good in preventing structure two, but they have a limitation of structure one. So for a, a system that is structure two and a structure one, this region in between a structure one and a structure two is a complete inhibitor. And you see that there is a complete inhibition there. So total uh, subcooling that can prevent hydrate formation is around 10 degrees. But if you look at a different structure, a different gas composition, you can have a structure one and a structure two uh, very close to each other, then it is 5.2. If you can have a lean gas that a structure one is dominating, then again, very limited uh, inhibition. And we can also identify uh, this region for different KHIs. And you can see that um, different KHI will perform differently. So if you have a subcooling of, uh, for example, five degrees, um, you can see that all KHI will work. For all the, for all gases, this uh, all formulation, um, this KHI will, all the KHI will work. But if you increase subcooling to, for example, eight degrees, then this one work, this one work, this one work, this one work, this will work, this will work, this will work. This will work. Then look at the uh, more detailed testing and 
based on price, then you can decide which one you choose. So, and um, some of the tests, for example, I'm a bit rushing now. Uh, this is hydrate forming here. And at the liquid phase, no hydrate is forming uh, because we have KHI, but here the vapor pressure of KHI is low, doesn't prevent hydrate formation. But the point is that as long as you are in the green zone, if the um, liquid that has KHI comes into contact, it will melt hydrate. And I have many evidence in real cases that hydrate is forming at the top, and then uh, the slug of uh, chemical, a uh, slug of aqueous phase will dissolve the hydrate. <clears throat> now, one problem, as I said, that they can come out of solution. We have now developed a solvent extraction that is being commercialized. Well, NOV that we can remove the KHI from produced water, and then what we can do with that water, we can uh, remove the KHI and recover it and reuse, reuse it. And the effect KHI here, the effect of KHI is compared with different amount of MEG. You see that this is a hydrate phase boundary. This is a structure one phase boundary. This KHI will shift the, uh, the uh, complete inhibition region by five degrees. So this is at high pressure is the equivalent to 25%, 1% uh, uh, KHI. Is the, equivalent to 25%. At medium pressure, for example, if the operation is 70 bar, is equivalent 32. And at low pressure, is equivalent to 37. And now we know that we can mix them. We can use the same solvent extraction to uh, take the KHI out of solution and then send the KHI free to make regeneration. This is a startup and shutdown. You see that in the past we had to reduce the pressure to below hydrate, but now we can leave the pipeline at much higher pressure and restart condition. So filling less gas. So um, maybe if we can in, in convince the industry, this is the time for KHI coming back to uh, market. And I'd like to thank all the sponsors and uh, this symposium for inviting me. Thank you very much. <laughs>